Hey, I'm Chris, and this is MMA for You. I'm going to be doing my predictions for UFC 202, McGregor vs. Diaz 2, which happens on August 20th. Uh, but before I get into that, I'd like to plug my own author's website at www.chrismodon.com. I am an author specializing in the fantasy genre, and you can buy a couple of my works, starting with... My first novel, an action adventure called The Mustard Prince in the Condiment Kingdom for $4.99. On my website at www.chrismodon.com on PDF format. Or if you have an e-reader, you can buy it for $4.99 at Amazon.com. You can also buy some of my short stories and short story collections uh, just for $1.99. Um both on my website and on Amazon.com, starting with the fantasy horror short story, uh, The Land of the Wooden Statues, which I'm trying to make into a full novel right now, uh, The Horror Collection, which is a collection of three of my gothic horror short stories, and my Fantasy Fable Collection, which is a collection of four of my Fantasy Fable short stories. So, on to this card. Um good card. The top three matches with Diaz versus McGregor, Johnson versus uh, Teixeira, Cerrone versus uh, Story. Those are pretty strong. Um, there's a lot of action fights here too. Hungyu Lim versus uh, UFC newcomer Mike Perry. That should be a fun action fight. Means versus Strickland can be fun. It's hard to say. Strickland like, I think Means will press the issue to make it a fun fight. Cody Garbrandt versus Takeo Mizugaki should be good. Uh, Pennington versus Phillips should at least be a pretty fun fight. Avila versus Lobov um, actually could be pretty fun because Avila is not afraid to box. Lobov's not afraid to counterpunch. Cummington versus Griffin. I mean, it's a good prospect fight. And then on a, you have like Marcos versus Casey, good prospect fight. Um, U Uda versus Vittori should actually be pretty fun. Larkin versus Magni should actually be really good. And uh, Ning versus Vera, uh, you know, possible finish here, but otherwise, you know, a lot of them have potential for uh, finishes at the very least. A lot of these fights. <laughs> So, um, yeah, let's get started. Okay, in the main event, five rounds, Nate Diaz fights N Notorious Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor, 19-3 record, 17 wins by KO or Tico, one win by sub, three losses by submission, 28 years old, he's 5'8", training out of SBG Ireland, and he is a UFC featherweight champion, but he is fighting this fight at 170 pounds. Um, he's known for his boxing. He'll throw some crazy kicks, like cartwheel kicks and whatnot. But for the most part, his left hand is like crazy strong. Uh, he's knocked out a good amount of opponents with that left hand. Um, that's that's his money strike, right there. He has a strong chin as well. He is a pressure fighter. He's always pushing forward. His grappling. I mean, we haven't seen too much of it. You know, we see bits and pieces of it obviously he got choked out by Nate Diaz um, we saw him take down Max Holloway uh, consistently in the third round you know he got taken down by Chad Mendez but managed to get back to his feet so we got to see some of his grappling like like I think he actually got a sweep on Nate Diaz too so um I'd say it's it's good, but it's still very much one of those, like, it could be a perceived weakness of his. Against Mendes, he seemed a little too flat on his back and just didn't do much when he was on his back. Uh, Nate Diaz, 19-10 and 10 record, 4 wins by K.R. Tico, 12 wins by Sub. 31 years old, he's 6 foot on a 2 fight winning streak, training out of Caesar Gracie. He's an Ultimate Fighter winner, and he's defeated McGregor by submission back in March of 2016. He is a legit Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. Really strong front chokes. Strong scrambler as well. He's good off his back. He'll throw a lot of uh, triangles and whatnot. 
Uh, he's a strong boxer, real high volume, uses a jab really well and straight punches really well. He's got a good chin. Um, he does taunt opponents a lot of times. Um, but he has shown, just like the Diaz brothers, they generally shown weak takedown defense. Part of it's their stance, too. They, they're really heavy. Um, is it front leg? No, it's back leg, right? And they, they've shown weakness to leg kicks as well. Um, the first time that I did the predictions for this fight, it's funny because I, um, I picked McGregor, right? And what happened was I was like, and I even said, it's like, yeah, I don't, I'm not confident in that pick. And the reason why is no one's been able to outbox a Diaz brother. Here's the thing with the Diaz brothers. You take them down and you kick them. <laughs> and that's generally how you beat them, but you can't really outbox them, you know? It, I mean, and you can use a lot of movement on them too. I think Conor McGregor's got the movement. He doesn't really have the kicking game, and he doesn't really have the wrestling game. He's going to be the shorter fighter. Um, he's 5'8". Diaz is 6'0". Uh, um, I don't think the fight's going to be like the first fight. You know, with Conor McGregor just totally selling out with that left hand to the point where he just almost like gas himself throwing that lot and he just threw it over and over and over again and then as the fight wore on he was forsaking his defense when Conor McGregor starts to move his head and counter you know he is really good when he's he starts just to like forget his defense after a while I don't know if it's because he's getting hit heat of the moment or what not um but it kind of cost them against Nate Diaz eventually in that second round of their first fight. Uh, I really don't expect their, this fight to be that similar to the first fight. I just think McGregor's going to sell out on that left hand a little. You know, not as much. But um, I don't see him adding like a kicking game, a leg kick game. I can't see him going for constant takedowns. I think that would be a mistake against Nate Diaz anyways. Um, and, you know, I said it before, I said it again, who, in an MMA boxing match, who's really outboxed to Diaz, brother? You know? Um, I, I haven't seen it. So, like I said, I, I don't think it'll be like the first fight. But at the same time, I just don't feel like Connor has the tools that generally beats uh, Diaz, brother. Um, also, D you know, it's funny. I mean, he wants the f their first fight, and that first round, I mean, they're saying, like, oh, Nate Diaz is a punching bag. It's like, actually, he was, he was doing a lot better in that first round than I remember him doing. Uh, the first time watching it. He actually does a lot of shoulder rolling. I was actually kind of surprised how many um, uh, how many times he managed to not get hit clean and uh, deflect the um, uh, Nick McGregor's punches with his shoulder rolls. So, with that said, I, I see in a five round fight too, I see Nate Diaz just doing what Diaz does. He'll take a big shot or two to give th two, three, four small shots. And it just always seems to happen. You know, like a guy hits him hard once and they get hit not so hard a couple times. And it's rinse and repeat until the Diaz brother just kind of takes over. You know, uh, it, it's it's just nonstop. You know, high volume. You're getting hit all the time. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to go Nate Diaz to win this one by decision. I, I, I just kind of feel that it's going to be your typical Diaz fight. Uh, I think that McGregor is going to hit him, hit him hard. But he'll probably take a couple. And I can just see a lot of that happening. I don't know if McGregor at 170 will be able to knock out or knock down Nate Diaz. I 
you know, I remember in an interview, he even said, yeah, at 145, I touch a guy and they go down. But over here, I don't know if that's the case. Um, both guys are going to have a full training camp for each other. So that's going to be a little different. So there's no surprises here as far as what Diaz can, um, can do and whatnot. And McGregor, I think, was definitely thrown off by his durability. McGregor's biggest strength is his confidence. His biggest weakness is his confidence. <laughs> you know, I think as the fight won in the first fight, his confidence goes down. And then he lost the fight. Um, and I really think that eventually, you know, you're not going to break the Nate Diaz. <laughs> you know, it's, it just doesn't happen. He keeps fighting. Even if he's losing, he keeps fighting. It's just it's the way he's made. Uh, I'm not saying McGregor's going to fold per se, but I think he's going to succumb to, like, the Diaz boxing game and whatnot. So, I don't know if he's going to get finished this time around. I could see Nate Diaz by sub, but I'll go Nate Diaz by decision. Next right after that, Anthony Rumble Johnson fights Glover Teixeira. Johnson, 21-5 and five record, 15 wins by KO Tico, 6 wins by decision, has 4 losses by sub, 32 years old, he's 6'2", on a 2-fight winning streak, training out of the Black Zillions. He's a strong kickboxer, super heavy hands, he might be the heaviest handed fighter in the UFC, seriously, this guy, like, knocks dudes down or knocks them out, he has good kicks, his takedown defense is good. Uh, his biggest problem, though, he's kind of, he's weak off his back, and his cardio is very questionable, especially when he gets into this, like, rage brawler mode. You'll see it a lot, too. In the Gustafson fight, you see it, um, where he just kind of, like, starts pressuring guys and just starts throwing heavy punches, um, and then it, like, saps his cardio because he's trying to knock his opponent's head off. Glover Teixeira, 25 and 4 record, 15 wins by KO Tico, 7 wins by sub, 36 years old, he's 6 2 on a 3 fight win streak. He's a BJJ black belt. Uh, he has some strong top control and some good ground and pound. His uh, wrestling is actually not too bad. Uh, he has a pretty good single leg -like takedown. Um, he also transitions, like, he uses a traditional single or double leg -like takedowns to good effect. Uh, his striking game is an inside boxing game, which he uses to great effect. He just knocked out Rashad Evans quite recently, quite easily. And uh, before that, it was what, Pat Cummins, right? Uh, yeah, he's a heavy-handed guy. Uh, he's got a good chin, too. Like, a really surprisingly good chin. I remember OSP, uh, when he, when Teixeira fought OSP, I mean, OSP like had him against the cage and just started unloading and I thought it was over. I thought, oh dude, Glover to Sheriff's gonna get knocked out. Nope. <laughs> comes back, survives, comes back, gets a takedown, gets uh gets a submission and gets a win on OSP. Um the one thing I'm not big on with Teixeira though is his takedown defense actually isn't that good because his takedown defense involves him going threatening with a guillotine I mean that's it like he'll just like he'll threaten with the guillotine if someone shoots in on him and that's his the extent of his takedown defense and he'll either hit that guillotine or he'll miss <laughs> but he's actually pretty good at scrambling back to his feet when he's taken down this one's actually a little harder for me to call because there really is a case with Anthony Rumble Johnson of weathering the early storm it's just not a lot of opponents have been able to do it, except recently as Daniel Cormier. If you can weather that early storm, get him tired, uh, then Gilbert Teixeira is actually, I, I think that he's capable of winning the fight, if he can do that. He has shown the chin to do that, and the overall well-roundedness to do that. However, it's it's Anthony Rumble Johnson. I mean, he has this this fight changing power. It, it's it's really tough for me to pick against Rumble in a lot of fights just because like he hits so hard. 
you know, like I said, he might be the hardest hitting guy in the division, one of the hardest hitters in the UFC. Um, on the way, he knocked out Gustafson, who's known to have this amazing chin. Dropped Daniel Cormier a couple times, who's also known to have a really good chin. Um, I'm going to go Anthony Rumble Johnson, and I am actually going to go by knockout, but it's not one I'm particularly confident in, simply because, like, like I said, whether the, like, Glover Teixeira is one of those guys that could conceivably weather the early storm and win late, maybe even, like, possibly even get takedowns later in the fight, and if he can, if Teixeira can get takedowns, I can actually see him taking the back. Or getting mount and uh, working from there, but I'll go Anthony Rumble Johnson because I think he's still the slicker striker at this point, uh, especially at range. At range, Anthony Johnson is should be able to win with the you know with his punches. Uh, he has really good kicks as well and some power. So a lot of opponents have to respect that. I think Glover might actually have a hard time getting inside for his boxing game. So, that's another thing, too. Um, so, Anthony Rumble Johnson by KO or TKO. Next fight after that, Donald Cowboy Cerrone fights Rick the Horror Story. Story, 19-8 and eight record, 4 wins by KO TKO, 4 wins by Sub, 31 years old. He's 5'10 on a 3-fight win streak, training out of MMA Lab. He has some good offensive wrestling. Um... Particularly strong in the clinch and just a really strong guy. He's a good ground to pound. Uh, uh, story is always pushing forward. He's got a good chin on him, too. His stand up's actually getting a lot better on a technical level. He used to be something of like this untechnical brawler in the stand up. Actually, has a pretty good leg kick game, too. Um, Story's defense in the stand up still isn't that good. And his overall takedown defense actually isn't the greatest. Uh, he actually gets taken down quite a bit. Um, Donald Cowboy Cerrone, 30 and 7 record with one no contest, six wins by Kortiko, 16 wins by Sub. That's his two losses by Kortiko. 33 years old, he's 5'11 on a two fight win streak, training out of Jackson Winkle John. He has some strong Muay Thai, uh, particularly good kicks. To everywhere, too. Head, body, and legs. Um, he has, his knees are good, too. He actually uses his knees as a form of takedown defense. So his takedown defense is actually pretty good. Um, Cerrone's actually showing to be a bit heavier-handed. He was just landing that left hook on Patro Cote just at will. Eventually knocked him out. And Cote's a guy that's had, you know, historically had a good chin, but man, Cerrone just made it look easy. Uh, Cerrone's wrestling also is improving. You actually remember the uh, Cote fight, and he took him down almost right away. Time to takedowns really well. Uh, Cerrone's BJJ is really strong. He's get off his back, got taken to back as well. Biggest problem with Cerrone, slow starter. Um, you know, for the most part, with Cerrone, he's not the type of guy to lose fights because he's getting, t at this point of the game, because he's getting like taken down over and over again or anything like that, or clinched up against the cage and grinded on. Uh, Story's last fight against Safadine, um, you know, it was an okay performance. I mean, really, he didn't show much except like he just grinded Safting up against a cage over and over again. Um, this fight, it should be a little different because Donald Cerrone is really good at range. So is Safadine, but Safadine, like, he just, he need, he's the type of guy that's always looking for the perfect punch. Cerrone is not really like that type of guy. He's, he's just throwing, um, may, he, he's the type of guy who makes openings. Um, and so, like, looks for the opponent to make a mistake for an opening. Um, on a technical level, I like Cerrone here. I I think he's a better striker. Uh, the size things always... I don't know if it's actually going to work against him. You know, Cerrone, like, he looked smaller, like, 
not tall, not height wise, but just in like body structure, you know, he's just like, he's kind of, I guess, skinny for a weight class. Like he's not particularly big for a weight class per se, but, and like Rick's story is like, he's only 5'10", but he's like, you know, super, like really strong for a weight class. You know, he's not a guy that can cut to 155. Um, but otherwise, and, and that gives me pause for concern here, but like, you know, I haven't seen someone with Rick Story's style of fighting to beat Cerrone, you know, it, it's a little more Russell and clinch heavy, um, and yeah, like I said, I don't, that style generally doesn't beat Cerrone, like, that I can think of. Especially to the Cerrone of now, who has better take down offense, scrambles back to his feet well, and, and whatnot. So, I gotta go Donald Cerrone to win this. I'll go by decision, because Rick Story's a uh, pretty tough guy. He's got a really good chin. I, I just think that Cerrone, at range especially, and it, you know, the thing with Cerrone is once he gets a rhythm, um, you know, he can do work at range. You know, he's gonna land combinations usually ending them with kicks. Uh, I think Rick Story is going to be in his face a lot of times, but I he, I don't feel that Rick Story is the better striker here. Uh, I feel that Cerrone is the better striker. I think Story is going to definitely try and grind against the cage a lot. Uh, doesn't give me too much cause for concern, because like, Cerrone, it, from what I remember, just isn't the guy that gets stuck gets his back stuck against a cage too much. I think he's good at peeling off against a cage and whatnot. Um, so yeah, I'll go Donald Cerrone by decision. Next fight after that, Mike Perry fights Hung Yu, the ace limb. And I gotta say right now, before I do this, um, I am actually not 100% sure if Hung Yu Lim is gonna stay on the main card. Um... Just because he was supposed to, well, he was supposed to fight Sultan Aleyev. So I guess, you know, no one knows who Sultan Aleyev. So, yeah, actually, I think he will probably stay on the main card. My bad. It's just that I, I would have figured that the guy who beat him last, Neil Magny, who's fighting Lorenz Larkin, would actually be in this spot and not on some, like, prelim spot. But, and actually, what's funny with Neil Magny is that he beat, he's the last guy to beat Tim Means, no, no, he's not the last guy, but he also beat Tim Means, who's also fighting on the main card, but for some reason, these guys are higher up on the card than Magni, which I find very surprising, considering that Magni had that, like, fight of the, what is it, like a fight of the night bout against Hector Lombard last time out, and then Lorenz Larkin's a known action fighter, who's coming up the ranks, but anyways, so, um, Hung Yu Lim versus Mike Perry. Mike Perry, 6-0, undefeated record with all six wins by KO TKO. He's 24 years old and never been past the second round. It's his first fight in the UFC, and he's taking it on short notice. I watched two bouts of his. Uh, one's against uh, Frank Carrillo and another one. The other bout, dude, he got dropped and mounted. <laughs> uh, even against Frank Carrillo, he got hit, like, good. Uh, the thing with Mike Perry, he's a strong guy, like, real muscular guy. Uh, stand-up's good, uh, particularly good boxing, I saw some knees that he threw that looked pretty good, and he threw a couple kicks, but for the most part, I, I mainly saw his hands, and he's real heavy-handed, uh, he throws a lot of single strikes, though, he, he didn't seem like much of a combination striker, and his stand-up defense did not look very good. Hungy Lim. Uh, 13 and 5 record with one draw. 10 wins by KO Tico, 2 wins by sub. That's just 2 losses by sub. Uh, 31 years old, he's 6'2, training at a Korean top team. And he's trading losses and wins right now, most recently losing to Neil Magny. He last fought in May of 2015, and he is big for 170. This guy, honestly, I'm just gonna say this right now. I don't know why he doesn't fight at middleweight. I really don't. I. He's a mid-level action fighter at welterweight, and at middleweight, I mean, he's not going to be undersized. I, I, I would just think that, like, he, he could actually be something, a possible top 15 at middleweight, you know, possible. 
But at Walter Wade, it's just a lot deeper. Well, anyways, limb stand-up is good. He's real heavy-handed. Particularly strong knees, though. But his grappling is just kind of average at best. He's not that great off his back. Um, look, Mike Perry hits real hard. And there's always, you know, we've been seeing a lot of upsets and whatnot. And just guys that have been coming in, you know, taking bats on short notice and just cleaning house and whatnot. Um, so I would say that Mike Perry definitely has the puncher's chance. But as far as an overall game, uh, I, I gotta go Hungy Lamb here. You know, it just, uh, I think he might be a little better on the on the outside, maybe Mike Perry, but even then, like, Mike Perry still gets hit. And then on the inside, I like Hung Yu Lim's game, especially with his knees and whatnot. Um, so, and then the fact that Perry's taking this fight on short notice, and it's his first time in the UFC, I, I just, you know, that doesn't bode well. The fact that he's never passed the second round, uh, you know, I gotta wonder about his cardio, too. Um, and actually, Hungry Lim's cardio isn't the greatest, though. That's a problem. He did go five rounds with Safadine, though. But he got leg kicked a whole bunch of in that fight. Otherwise, I'll go Hungry Lim by knockout here. Um, maybe something from the inside. Maybe some knees or whatever. Uh, it, it's tough to say how exactly the fight's going to go down, but, like... I just think that Hyung Yi Lim at this point is probably the more diverse striker. Uh, I don't actually know Perry's height, but Lim might be the bigger guy. It's tough to say because Mike Perry, when I saw him, man, that guy looked pretty big himself. Um, but yeah, Hyung Yi Lim by uh, KRT Gale. So after that, Tim the Dirty Bird Means fights Sean Tarzan Strickland. Strickland, 18 and 1 record, 8 wins by KR Tico, 4 wins by Sub, 25 years old. He's 6 1 on a 3 fight win streak. Um, I'd say, like, Strickland's stand up, I'd say it's mainly boxing based. It's average, you know, it's got a low volume, though. And a lot of times he looks like he's looking to counter strike. His overall wrestling is actually pretty good, though, and his Brazilian Jiu Jitsu skills are actually not bad, too. Natural inclination to take the back. And he's shown a really good chin. When he fought Ponzinibbio, man, that guy was getting hit, like, so clean, and he was still standing. Tim Means, 25 and 7 record with one draw, 17 wins by KO Tico, 4 wins by Sub. Has three losses by sub, 32 years old. He's 6'2", trains out of Fit NHB, the likes of Ray Borg. Um, who else trains there? There are others that train there whose names I forgot. Anyways, Means, strong Muay Thai. Uh, his game, he, he's strongest in the clinch. His knees and elbows from the clinch are fight ending. Um, he does have some pretty heavy hands. His overall grappling's improving too. Remember, he got that arm triangle on uh, George Sullivan. Um, historically, means his take down the fence at lightweight is not very good. At welterweight, it looks a little better. I mean, like Neil Magny was able to take him down, but for the most part, uh, means his take down fence and, and overall grappling has shown improvement. Tough one to call um, because Strickland is the type of guy that can win a decision. But, and also, as far as outfighting goes and wrestling, I would actually favor Strickland in that those areas. Um, Means, though, is a lot more offense minded. From the inside, his clinch knees and elbows are really powerful. I think he's probably the heavier handed of the two as well. Um, so, this one's really hard for me to call because um, there are certain aspects of the game that I find better with certain fighters. Like I said, I think Strickland's a better wrestler. He hasn't used his wrestling much lately, though. And, um,. I think from the outside, Strickland might be a little better. Tim Means, though, like I said, he's like an all-offense fighter. And he is trying to hurt you. He is trying to finish you. If he gets in the inside, he's trying to knee and elbow you. And he punches pretty hard. He actually has some pretty decent head movement, too. 
Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go Tim Means here just because he throws a little more, you know. Strickland is going to be a can be a very low volume striker, and um, I think Means is also the better potential finisher. But Strickland at this point hasn't been finished. He lost a decision to Ponzinibbio, so I'll go Tim Means by decision with the possibility of a KO or TKO finish. Okay, on the prelims, uh, Cody No Love Garbrandt fights Takeo Mizugaki. Garbrandt, 9 0 undefeated record, 8 wins by Karatika, 1 win by decision. 25 years old, he's 5'7, training out of Team Alpha Male. He has some strong boxing, he uses combinations well, and he's heavy handed. He's actually a pretty good wrestler, too. I think he actually has a wrestling background. And most recently, knocked out hot prospect Tomas Almeida in his last fight. Takeo Mizugaki, 21 9 record with 2 draws. Five wins by Keiro Tico, one win by sub. That's those two losses by Keiro Tico, two losses by sub. 32 years old, he's 5'7". Last fought in September of 2015. He's also a good boxer with a really good chin. And an underrated grappler, too. He has a pretty good um, clinch takedown game. And actually some pretty strong ground and pound. Um, but as far as this fight goes, it, you know... Mizu Alex is a good boxer, but so is Garbrandt. And then uh, Garbrandt's a good wrestler. I can't help but feel that this is more of a lateral move from Tomas Almeida to Mizugaki. I don't really think it's like a step up, but just a step laterally. Almost to keep him busy and whatnot. And, you know, and with that said, like I gotta go Cody Garbrandt, and I'll even go by KO or TK. I mean, Mizugaki's shown a good chin, but Garbrandt's boxing is really good. He, he hits some combinations. Um, and he's pretty heavy handed. There's that one fight that I think he fought. Pretty, was it Henry Briones? Where he looked pretty bad. Um, bad in the sense that like he, like he surprisingly didn't knock him out. Um, and looked just a bit like. Kind of like painfully average. But then, like, in his next two bouts, he knocked out his opponents, including a hot prospect. Mizugaki is capable of halting the hype train right now of Garbrandt. But, like, stylistically, like, I can't really see Mizugaki necessarily outboxing Garbrandt. I can't really see him out grappling Garbrandt. So, I'll go Garbrandt by KRTKO. Next right after that, Raquel Rocky Pennington fights Elizabeth Phillips. Elizabeth Phillips, 5 and 3 record, 2 wins by Karatika, 1 win by Sub, 29 years old, 5'6, training out of Sig Jitsu with the likes of Juliana Pena and uh, Michael Chiesa and Sam Cecilia. Uh, her setup's kind of reckless, but she's always pushing forward. Like, it's not technical, but she throws. You know, she'll throw like the haymakers and whatnot, but it's not really technical. I actually rewatched her fight against Jasmine Duke. Uh, her Grappling's actually decent. Um, you know, in that fight, though, she was able to get some dominant positions, not mainly because she was, like, grappling really well, but because Duke was making so many mistakes. Uh, Phillips's uh, cardio actually did, isn't that great either, but her ground and pound's good. Uh, Pennington, 7-5 and five record. One win by Tico, three wins by Sub. 27 years old, she's 5'7". A two-fight winning streak, most recently beating Batch Cohea. Uh, she has some good stand-up. Her clinch striking has, has actually gotten a lot better. And her grappling, I'd say it's just average. One of the biggest problems with Raquel Pennington is that she kind of just sits there and does like... Like, she'll have an opportunity to throw a strike or something, but she just kind of sits there and looks... Um, that's kind of been one of the problems with Pennington. She kind of just gets lost in the fight, I guess. Like, I don't know another way to say it, but it's just like, you know, when she fought, like, Kohea, there's sometimes she'd, like, get the clinch, you know, they get the clinch, and then, like, they break the clinch, and she's still in striking range, and she's just kind of looking at Betch Kohea, and I'm like, Dude, throw, you're right there, you're in range, you know. 
So, um, Pennington has that problem going for her. Everything else is solid. Her striking solid. She's not the most, but she's not particularly heavy handed, though. And, uh, her grappling's good. You know, it's not great, but it's good. Uh, with that said, I'll go with Cal Pennington by decision. Uh, I think she's a bit cleaner as far as technique goes. I doubt she'll make the same mistakes that Duke has made uh, on the ground, you know. And yeah, with Phillips, she's just a little too reckless, and her cardio just isn't that good either. I, I think Pennington has better cardio as well, so I call Pennington by decision. Um, how the fight will turn out, it's tough to say. In the clinch, I like Pennington a little better. Rain striking, um, it's about even. Grappling, it's about even, but like, Pennington's got the better cardio, it's, it's real tough too, so yeah, I'll just go with Cal Pennington by decision. Next fight after that, Chris Avila fights Artem, the Russian Hammer Lobov. Chris Avila, 5-2 and two record, 3 wins by KO Tico, 1 win by Sub, he's 5-7 on a 3 fight win streak, training out of Caesar Gracie, he is a... Uh, training partner of, like, the Diaz brothers, if I'm not mistaken. Um, well, yeah, he is. <laughs> um, it is first fight in the UFC, so I actually watched two of his bouts. One of them was a bit older, but I wanted to get an idea of what his striking was like. And one of them was newer, but he was primarily grappling. Uh, he definitely... Excuse me. Um, with Avila, he definitely fights like a Diaz brother, you know? He uses a jab... He primarily boxes. He doesn't have the defense um, that the Diaz brothers have. Like, he'll just get, like, hit. Or he doesn't have, like, that same, I guess, like, durability that the Diaz brothers have, I guess. I don't know if that what's the right word, but, like, he just doesn't take a hit like the Diaz brothers. Like, he fights like them, but he doesn't, like... Because I remember he got, like, over... Like, I saw... So, so about of his, you know, it's like he's throwing his, con like, throwing his jab, and then he gets, like, gets hit with a fl flush right hand on left, then, like, grind it up against a cage, you know, it's, um, and actually, well, he's a shorter fighter, I don't know, he, he's, he's kind of rangy, but, like, I don't know if he's actually gonna be, he's not the taller fighter in this fight. Um, I like to be this grappling. I, like I said, there's one bout where he managed to get a rear naked choke on one of his opponents. Like, his grappling looked pretty good. So, you know, everything looked pretty good, but it's just not, like, particularly great. Um, Artem Lobov, though, he has 11 and 12 record with one draw and one no contest. Four wins by KO Tico, two wins by Sub. Also, two losses by Sub. 29 years old, he's 5'9", on a two fight losing streak. Um,. He's kind of like this brawler when he's offensive and a counter striker when he wants, uh, primarily counter striker. He's shown to be pretty heavy handed and his wrestling actually isn't too bad. Um, this is really hard to call because I am not high at all on Artem Lobov, but Chris Lovell is just really new. Uh, he's got a decent enough game, but, like, I think it might actually play to Artem Lobov's game, too. You know, because if Lobov wants a counter-strike, the counters, the counters will be there against a guy like Chris Avila. Um, wrestling-wise, I mean, Lobov's not terrible, you know? Chris Avila's a good enough grappler, but, like, I don't know if it's, like, that much better than Lobov's. Experience also goes to Artem Lobov as well, so, um, I said I'm just not high, but, like, how is Artem Lobov losing? Well, I'll still Ryan Hall, because Ryan Hall, like, Lobov looks just flat out scared of the jiu-jitsu ability of Ryan Hall, so he didn't throw anything, and it was just trying to defend, like, getting out grappled, um, and then he fought, like, uh, Alex White, and Alex White actually looked really improved, he was, go he was moving a lot, throwing combinations and getting out, I just don't know if Chris Avila has that, I don't know if he has the movement, I don't know if he can like throw his combination, well actually, he's actually not that bad at that, one of the commentators are actually talking about, like he'd throw a jab, slip out, and then 
as the opponent tries to lunge in on him, he'll throw something. So Vila is actually not too bad at that. Ooh. Yeah, yeah he's not too bad at that. Uh, nonetheless, I'll go with Artem Lobov to win this one. I, I'm i not too confident in this pick at all. <laughs> Just to tell you. Um, because I think that Lobov... Um, with Avila's game kind of plays into Lobov's counter-striking game. That's the thing. And, um, Lobov does actually throw everything into his punches, and he hits relatively hard, despite the fact that he only has four KOs or two KOs. Um, and, and grappling-wise, I can't really say who's better. So, and then the experience goes to Lobov, too. So, I'll go with Artem Lobov to win this one. Um, I'll go by decision. I'm not, I'm like, I'm not super confident in the pick, though. I'm not even particularly confident in that pick. Next round is that Colby Chaos Covington fights Max Payne Griffin. Max Griffin, 12 and 2 record, 6 wins by KOTKO, 2 wins by sub. 30 years old, he's 6 two, or six foot, excuse me, on a 2 fight win streak, and it's his first fight in the UFC. Uh, his boxing is actually pretty good. Uh, I actually saw him throw, I saw two fights of his, uh, a recent one where he knocked out, uh, David Mitchell, knocked him out, like, dropped him, like, three times, you know, uh, so he's pretty heavy-handed, but then I saw another one where he fought, uh, Randy Wallace, right, I think it was Randy Wallace, he got taken down quite a bit, uh, and actually got his back taken in that fight. So his takedown defense is a bit questionable. And then he's fighting Kobe Covington. has a 9-1 record. 6 wins by sub. 3 wins by decision. Uh, 20 years old. He's 5'11". Training out of ATT. And he's a strong wrestler. Good in the clinch. Good at completing takedowns against the cage. Uh, he has a good ground and pound. His stand-up is actually improving. Um, and his overall grappling ability is pretty good, too. Uh, and like I said, uh, with that, like, Ran I think it was Randy Wallace fight, like, you know, it's like Griffin was getting taken down against his cage and getting his back taken. That was just like two fights ago. It's, it was a pretty recent fight. Um, Kobe Covington, he's a superior wrestler and a really good prospect. Um, I, I just, I like his game. I, I like that, uh, he can probably get the takedown quite consistently. And I can see him eventually getting the subs. So I'm going to go Kobe Covington by submission. Okay, on the UFC Fight Pass prelims, Courtney Cast Iron Casey fights Ronda Quiet Storm Marcos. Courtney Casey, 5 and 3 record, 3 wins by KO Tico, 2 wins by sub. He's 29, she's 5'6. She's actually a potent finisher of her fights. Her stand up's actually not too bad and her overall grappling isn't too bad either. She just wrecked Christina Century in her last fight. Took her down, mounted her, and just pounded her out. Um, lost to C.O.E. Ham and Joanne Calderwood. Ronda Marco, 6-3 and three record, 3 wins by sub, 3 wins by decision, 30 years old. She's 5'5", five five, training out of Michigan top team. She's training wins and losses right now, most recently winning against Leibarger, right? Marcos is super aggressive. She's actually a good wrestler, but she tends to, she likes to, like, want to recklessly stand with her opponent and just brawl with them. Um, and that's kind of what she does. Um, she's always pushing forward. So to eat some punches, to give some. So it's tough for me to call. Both are actually pretty good athletes. Um, Marcos is a bit reckless, but, like, Casey has a fight goes on can get a bit reckless too i'm actually really surprised that like that she lost a coe hum um losing to carterwood isn't too bad she lost that final short notice uh this is stuff to call just in the sense that it's like random marcos is just super not technical i mean she is this reckless aggressive brawling type of fighter who is actually a pretty good wrestler, um, but like, <laughs> you know, I, I just wish Marcos was more more of a technical fighter, uh, 
Casey, like I said, she's kind of just like good everywhere, but not great at any one aspect of MMA. So, this one's tough for me to call because I can see Casey actually hit Marcos clean quite a bit. <laughs> um, I can see just Marcos is pushing forward, throwing recklessly, connecting enough, maybe get a takedown if she wants it, and uh, just getting a decision and a real ugly decision victory. I'll say this though, I think Ronald Marcus is probably better in the clinch. I like her, she actually has some pretty good clinch uppercuts uh, that have worked to her favor and, and quite a bit of her fight. So, uh, I'll go to Ronald Marcos by decision. Next one is that, Alberto Uda Pereira fights Marvin Vittori. Vittori, 10-2 and two record, 2 wins by Kertiko, 7 wins by Sub, 22 years old, 6 foot on a 5 fight win streak. Um, it's first find the UFC. I actually watched this fight against Igor Araujo. Um, his stand-up actually doesn't look too bad at range. He actually has some pretty good knees. His overall grappling game is actually pretty good, too. He tapped out, uh, Araujo after hurting him with, a, like, a flying knee, actually. Um, with a guillotine. Uh, Alberto Uda Pereira. 9-1 and one record, 4 wins by Kertiko, 4 wins by Sub, 31 years old, he's 6'3". Uh, name of Udo's game is the clinch. I mean, he lost his last fight because he just, he really recklessly goes for the clinch. He, he almost has like a zero range striking game and gets hit at range a lot of times. Um, but once he gets into clinch, he has some like fight ending knees. He's really good with his knees and uh, other strikes uh, from the clinch. His Brazilian Jitsu skills actually aren't too bad. It's actually pretty good off his back, but he just has a weird game because like he's six three, but he's not a range. You know, he doesn't sound to be a great range striker. He's like more of an inside fighter, like, and he just like kind of recklessly goes for the clinch. Um. Tough for me to call because one, it's middleweight. <laughs> uh, I think it's middleweight. I'm not too. Yeah, I think it's middleweight. Um, but like, uh, I just don't see Pereira's game. I mean, he lost to oh Pereira lost to Jake Collier in his last fight. He got knocked out too. Uh, he managed to hit him with with strikes from the from the inside and from the clinch. But I like Marvin Vittori's just overall game, his overall stand-up game. Um, he's way the shorter fighter here. But like, Perez, he's just a little too hittable, especially at range. And then, you know, Vittori, he's a strong guy. He might be able to even get the takedown on Pereira. It's tough to say. Pereira's takedown defense actually doesn't look too bad. Like I said, not confident in this pick. But I I'm going to go Marvin Vittori to win this one. Um, can't really say how. Uh... Like I said, I think at range, he might do a little better. He's not a bad grappler in his own right, so... I'll go Marvin Vittori by decision. Next fight after that, and... I don't think that this fight will be in the prelim. UFC Fight Pass prelims, unless it's like the headliner prelim. Uh, but Lorenz the Monsoon Larkin fights Neil Magny. Okay, Larkin, 17-5 and five record with... One no contest. Ten wins by Kertiko. Seven wins by decision. Twenty nine years old. He's five eleven. Training out of Millennia MMA. He's a strong kickboxer. With really good kicks. Leg kicks, head kicks, and he's really tricky about it too. His fight, his last fight against um ah oh jeez, what's his Masvidal was brilliant. I mean that fight was just like he was just. You know, they they were doing a lot of setups with their strikes and whatnot. It's really good stuff. He's actually pretty heavy-handed, too. Um, his takedown defense actually isn't too bad, and his overall grappling is improving. Neil Magny, 18-4 and four record, 6 wins by KRTK, 3 wins by Sub. That's those 3 losses by Sub, 29 years old, he's 6'3", on a 3-fight win streak, most recently beating Hector Lombard. He trains out of grudge, and he's a good boxer, real high volume, he uses his range real well. His wrestling actually isn't too bad, if he gets on top of you, he is looking to get mount and or take the back. Um, and his ground and pound's good, and he's pretty resilient, too. I've seen him get dropped and just come back. You know, 
Magny's beaten the better level of competition. He beat Hector Lombard. He's beaten Kelvin Gastelum. Um, so, resume-wise, I like Magny. Well, Larkin's actually been in Lawler way back in Strikeforce at middleweight. But, um... And then Larkin did knock out Ponzinibbio. That's a really good win. Uh, I like Larkin's kicking game here. I think he can actually get some a lot of leg kicks on Magni. Um, and maybe he can get some overhands on Magni as well. But I like Magni's overall volume. He just throws a lot. He He's good at keeping range. It's tough to say, though, because I kind of wonder if, like, Magni's throwing hands, Larkin's throwing kicks. Like, that's kind of how I see the fight going. On the ground, Lark, uh, Magni should be better on the ground. I just don't know if he can take it there. Larkin's good at defending, like, singles. Like, single-like takedowns. Not bad at uh, doubles. But, you know, Magni has good clinch takedowns. So, I don't know if he'll be able to defend that. And then, in the... In the clinch, too. I, I gotta favor Magni here, just being the taller fighter. Um, this fight's really hard for me to call. You know, I I, I have a good streak with Magni going on. I, I think I picked his, like, last six, seven fights correctly. Win or lose. Um, last time he lost was against Damon Maya, and I picked Maya to win that one. Tough one for me to call here. I'm going to go Magni. I just think he can get a little more higher volume going on here. I think he might be able to get the clinch uh, a bit. It's kind of hard to get the clinch on Larkin these days. Um, he's actually pretty good at keeping range. But if Magni can get the clinch against the cage, I think he can do some damage and might even be able to get the takedown. And then range boxing, you got to give it to Magni. He's 6'3", and he uses his range really well. I can see Larkin throwing some good overhands, actually. He actually has some pretty good overhand, uh, like, is it, uh, is he southpaw? I think he's southpaw. No, he switches stances, but yeah, he has some good overhand strikes. And he has a good kicking game, too, which could actually negate the range thing. So that's why this one's hard for me to call, but I'm going to go Neil Magni to win that one by decision. And finally, uh, I can never pronounce his name. Uh, I'll just say Geng Yao, Smasher Ning, fights Marlon Chito Vera. Vera, 7-3 and three record with one draw, one win by KO, five wins by sub, 23 years old. He's 5'8", trading losses and wins, most recently losing to Davey Grant. His stand-up's painfully average. He, he kicks a lot, but it's just pretty average. His prison jitsu skills are actually pretty good. Um, he's particularly good off his back as well. Uh, I, uh, Gang Yu Ning, or is it Ning Gang Yu? I'll say Gang Yu Ning. Five and three record with one draw, uh, three wins by KRT kill, one win by sub, 34 years old, he's 5'5". Five five. Trains out of Tiger Muay Thai, and he is the Ultimate Fighter China champ uh, winner. Um, he's a brawler, uh, in the stand-up. He's actually pretty heavy-handed. His wrestling actually isn't too bad, offensively and defensively. He's actually just a really strong guy. Um, this one's hard for me to call because, like, the level of competition that these guys have beaten in the UFC is, like, really low. It's like, Marlon Vera beat, like, jeez, I've got the dude's name. He got, like, a triangle armbar on him, and he's, he's it's one guy, uh, Roman Salazar. He beat Roman Salazar and just got beat up by Davy Grant. And then Gang Yu, he most recently lost to Marco Beltran, who's getting a lot better. And a very tepid fight. And then he beat, like, Royston Wee, and, and, like, a guy from, one of the Chinese fighters from that season. Um, nonetheless, I like Cheeto's game. I've always liked the guy, but I don't know how much better he's getting. And at least for Gang Yu, it's like, He's strong. He can wrestle a bit. I think he's probably the heavier-handed guy. A little more fearless, too. So I'm going to gang you Ning by KO or TKO. Okay, to recap. Okay, uh, in the main card, I have Nate Diaz beating Conor McGregor by decision. Anthony Johnson over Glover Teixeira by KO or TKO. Donald Cerrone over Rick Story by decision. 
Uh, Hungi Lim beating Mike Perry by KRTKO. Tim Means beating Sean Strickland by decision. Oh, that's funny. I actually said that, like, you know, I can actually see a lot of finishes here, but I'm calling a good amount of decisions. Go figure. <laughs> um, on the prelims, Cody Garbrandt over Takeo Mezugaki by K.O. Tico. Raquel Pennington over Elizabeth Phillips by decision. Artem Lobov beating Chris Avila. I think it was by decision. Colby Covington over Max Griffin by submission. On to Fight Fast Prelims, I have Randa Marcos over Courtney Casey by decision. Marvin Vittori over Alberto Pereira by, was it decision? I think it's a decision. Neil Magny over Lawrence Larkin by decision. And Gang Yu Ning beating Marlon Vera by KO or TKO. So that's it for my predictions for UFC uh, 202, McGregor versus Diaz 2. Uh, if you have any comments, just leave them below. And please check out some of my work, starting with The Mustard Prince in the Condiment Kingdom for $4.99 on my website at www.chrismaldon.com on PDF format. Or if you have an e-reader, you can get it on Amazon.com. And also, for just $1.99, you can get some of my short stories and short story collections, starting with The Land of the Wooden Statues, my horror collection, and my fantasy fable collection. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for MMA for you. Thank you guys very much.